waging an insurgency to try to overthrow the government and rid the country of Christians. Now human rights groups are asking the White House to stop the carnage. After losing ground in Syria and Iraq, the top general of U.S. Special Operations Command in Africa is warning that al-Qaeda, ISIS and other Islamic terror groups are now trying to take over parts of the continent's most populous nation. Major General Dagvin Anderson says Muslim terrorists have set their sights on Nigeria's southern and northwestern regions and the U.S. is now sharing specific intelligence with the country. So this intelligence sharing is absolutely vital and we stay fully engaged with the government of Nigeria to uh, provide them an understanding of what these terrorists are doing. Their goal? Eventually turn Nigeria into a Muslim country and force Christians who make up half the country's population to either leave or convert. Christians are in the eye of the, the target and, and they're coming after them. And the numbers are staggering. August 6th, Muslims stormed four remote Christian villages in Kaduna State, killing 22 villagers. July 24th, 21 dead, scores injured, and several Christian homes destroyed by militants. July 19th, 19 people killed when assailants armed with guns and machetes attacked a wedding reception. And the list goes on. Leading human rights groups say what's going on in Nigeria is a genocide. If you look at what's happened uh, on the last 20 years, George, it's just massive, massive number of attacks against Christians. Uh, look, 50 to 70,000 have been murdered. For years, the main terror group was Boko Haram, which seeks to overthrow the government here and create an Islamic state. They go after Christians and moderate Muslims. They push a hardline Muslim agenda. It is their intention to establish a caliphate and to uh, just rid all of Nigeria and West Africa of any Western influence whatsoever. Now, there's a new actor on the scene in Nigeria's so-called Middle Belt region, where the Muslim North meets the Christian South, a terror group made up of Muslim Fulani herders are killing thousands of Christians. More than 1,400 Christians were hacked to death in just the first seven months of 2020 by Fulani herders. Unfortunately, the secular media are uh, quite often biased and trying to present this as a tribal conflict rather than religious. Nigeria's president, a Muslim, has so far done very little to stop the bloodshed. His police and army are also mostly made up of Muslims. The attackers are never captured. They are not prosecuted. The security services respond very slowly. A, a full day can go on with attacks happening and no security shows up. And frequently, the government officials will provide cover. Helpless and vulnerable to almost daily attacks, leading Catholic bishops are now urging Nigerian Christians to defend themselves. Human rights groups are asking the White House to appoint a special envoy to help end the persecution of Christians in Nigeria. Unless the world takes note and puts pressure, economic pressure, sanctions, uh, visa bans on the officials who are responsible for this travesty and for not reigning in the terror, then uh, Nigeria will continue to be a bloodbath. Meanwhile, King's Group is helping more than 3,000 Christians who lost their businesses, homes, farms or land to Boko Haram and Fulani militant attacks. International Christian Concern has created communal farms to give victims the opportunity to rebuild their lives. When they get back to work, the family is fed, they have a future, the kids can go back to school. It's a restoration of hope, it really is. Um, and it's much more than just economics. It's it's the whole community, it's all the parts of life, the emotional, the physical, the mental. It means a lot to them. ICC and so many other groups trying to bring hope in the midst of all this devastation facing the Christians of Nigeria. And they are doing it. They are. Absolutely. Great story, George. Thank you. Coming up, new evidence. Of